Das folgende Video wird euch präsentiert von IntelliAd, der Performance-Marketing-Plattform. Welcome to Venture TV. I have a special guest for you today. It's Ben Edelman. Ben, you are Associate Professor at Harvard Business School, teaching online marketing and online stuff. So how can you, how can you teach internet? How can you teach online marketing? How do your, do your classes look like? You know, the classes are participatory. Like most HBS classes, the students have to do the majority of the talking. I ask the questions okay. and leave the answers for them to figure out. All most right. of the students are working on ventures in this space, either startups or at least sketches of ideas they'd like to be working on. And there's ultimately a project where they bring their ideas as far as they can in the time available. So it's highly participatory and highly creative, I think, as the material requires. What, what topics do you cover? We cover mobilization strategy, how to get started when you've got nothing. So many of these businesses are distinctively difficult because you need multiple kinds of users at once. You want to start a smartphone operating system, you need both users and app developers, yeah. neither of whom will come if you don't have the other. Right. Uh, we talk about how to expand, how to use online advertising for growth, how to measure the effectiveness of online advertising, how to partner with intermediaries, distributors, brokers of all sorts. Uh, we talk about design decisions, uh, how to make your site look good, but also how to make it work well, mm -hmm. how to make your site uh, well functioning for both buyers and sellers if it's that kind of site, or in any event, uh, make sure that the rules encourage good behavior and discourage misbehavior. Pretty interesting uh, topics, all of them. Is there a resource for people out there who, who um, can't attend your lectures um, where you can find like online lectures? Uh, we don't have the lectures online, there are some university rules about that, oh, okay, okay. Uh, but the course structure and the students' blog posts, a required part of the course, are at onlineeconomy.org. That's fun, some of those posts are really good and you'll also get some overview of what the course is about. All right, yeah, you can just get a little glimpse of what you were talking about. Um, now we are, we are coming to a topic that's, uh, as far as I think, really interesting and it, that is the future of the internet. Um, you are, you're doing a lot of research about the internet. What, what's, your, um, what's your picture, what's your forecast on the future of the internet? How will it look like in a few years? Well, one of the most interesting questions is to what extent a few big firms will dominate online communication and commerce. Google, Facebook, Apple. Those are three that we should be thinking about. I spend by far the most time thinking about Google. Facebook okay. is fun for wasting time, but doesn't do anything serious for me or for all that much commerce that I've seen. And Apple is great if you like that sort of thing, but personally, I like more uh, reasonably priced and more flexible devices, a topic for another day. Google is really where the action is. There are so many companies that spend just a massive amount of money on Google, that spend more on Google than on any other way of finding customers that pay a king's ransom for those customers and yet don't see any other easy way forward. Uh, I've become a little bit alarmed, actually, at the amount of value that Google is extracting from the economy, yeah. from advertisers who, of course, are passing a fair portion of that back to consumers through higher prices or failure to lower their prices in the way that online efficiencies otherwise would be expected to yield. Mm -hmm. So there's this extremely powerful company, Google, that has had no real business model when it all started. They found out really quick that they can earn tons of money with advertising. They earn tons of money with advertising right now, becoming bigger and bigger and bigger. Um, there are some boundaries of growth. So Google is going into other areas like home automation, robotics. What do you think? What's, what's going on there? Why do they pick topics that were not in their original focus, but totally different? What's, what's going on? Why do they do that? Well, one question is whether there is that much more they could squeeze out of the online advertising business. I've come to think maybe not so much, actually. Okay, okay. Google's market share in online advertising is significant, and the bigger they get there, the more competition regulators get increasingly concerned, probably rightly so. 
So Google looks to other businesses that have some plausible long-term synergies. Maybe if we get some data about you from your thermostat or your refrigerator or what have you, we can use that to better serve you in some other way and get paid for doing so. But more than that, businesses that the founders think are cool, that seem like they should be good businesses in the long run. If you can build a self-driving car, that will be phenomenally valuable. And if your self-driving car is even a little bit better than the other guys, could be a lot better, then you should be paid a fair price for that. Actually, I'm more excited about Google's self-driving car than just about anything else the company has ever done. What a fabulous product, and they get major credit from me for working on that. All right. Um, do you think that they will interconnect all the services to one time rule the world and, and control our everyday lives from the morning until we, we go to bed? Or do you think it's not really about interconnecting all these things these things, it's, it's more about um, diversification because they can't grow much further in online advertising, so they try to earn much money in other areas. You know, those are both good explanations. I'm not sure we have to choose. They're thinking about both of those as they go down this road. Uh, to be sure, they've reserved for themselves the right to combine data in interesting and important ways. Recall the privacy policy disputes of about two years ago, where Google wanted the right to combine what they know about you from YouTube with what they know about you from Gmail with what they know about you from Google Search. And indeed, they have proceeded and done that, although to the dismay of several privacy regulators here in Europe, most notably the French privacy regulator, which just last month ordered that Google place an apology and a statement and a disclosure in quite a prominent place on their site yeah. to alert French users to what they've done and how the government declared it to be wrongful. When you think about the future, uh, can you um, yeah, see Google as a threat? Should we all be a bit careful about how big Google can become. They say do no evil, that's the claim, but um, you never know. So do you see a, a certain threat there? Google can get between a company and its customers mm -hmm. such that the customers find it very hard to reach the customer, the company and buy what they want to buy without Google collecting a toll along the way. Yeah. Whether that's a toll from something about Android or something about Chrome or an ad that you almost have to click on to get where you're trying to go mm -hmm. or all of the above. That results in the advertiser paying more to Google, more than zero. Zero might have been the place where this should have been. Yeah. The customer ultimately is going to be paying for that through higher prices. Mm -hmm. This is very alarming. No one likes higher prices. No one likes the efficiencies of the internet being eaten up by one dominant firm. And that is the direction we've been headed for some time now. Um, what do you think about European privacy concerns. Many Americans say like, oh my God, the Europeans, whatever. Um, what's, 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 your, uh, what's your thoughts about that? You know, Europeans approach privacy somewhat differently than Americans, yet the underlying concerns are real. You talk to Americans, they are concerned about privacy. They just don't quite know what they can do about it. Right. They don't necessarily trust the government to keep companies okay. in check. And who's the competitor to Google that will protect privacy better? It's not as if one could put the data into Yahoo and really feel like Yahoo is going to protect privacy significantly more. It's a strange kind of competition. It's like picking the airline that has the best service, right? If they're all lousy, what are you going to do? All right. Okay. All right. Yeah, thanks for your, for your thoughts about all the topics. Thanks for being here and uh, good luck for the future. Good luck with your class. And uh, yeah, I'll, I'm pretty curious about the things that will come from you and from your research. Thanks for being here. Thank you.